So, John and I are celebrating our 40th anniversary this year, and we're talking about our relationship. Video one, how we first met, and now we're talking about those early days in terms of what were the th- some of the things that we kind of dealt with in terms of uh, being together. So, my name is Brent Hawks, and I'm the Executive Director of Rainbow Faith and Freedom, and... And I'm John Sproul, and I'm happily retired. Yay, and my husband. Um, and so... So we've talked about how we met, and when we first got together, uh, I don't think John was quite sure about this. He had his own apartment, I had my own apartment, but we were together every night, well, the days too, but every night, and uh, we eventually decided that was way too much money to be spending on two different apartments, and so mine was larger and in the more in the gay area, so we John, John moved into uh, my apartment, and but when he first moved in, he wouldn't give up the second ironing board, the second iron, the second set of dishes, etc. Because, you know, we're just not, not quite sure where this is going, so we shouldn't really give up those things. So, he, you know, he was unsure about where this relationship was headed. I was absolutely convinced I knew exactly where I wanted it to head. But I was a little nervous because we, he wouldn't give up the second set of things. And but I, anyway. I think it's fair to say that back in the early 1980s, there weren't high expectations for gay relationships. Gay people sort of knew that it could work out and did work out, but most of society was sort of not looking for too much from gay people in general. The prejudices were pretty high. But I think there were a lot of longer-term relationships. The difficulty is when when two people got together and formed a relationship that looks like it was going to last, they would move to Scarborough or they'd move somewhere else and all of a sudden they would disappear in the scene because the scene was really geared for the bar crowd, was really geared for singles. It wasn't really geared to support couples, so couples would disappear. So we didn't have the role models around so you know i'm you know me. and also that was a difficult thing for the couples because suddenly they're outside of the safe zone outside of any really support uh, for their relationship so so it was you know it was a challenge but i remember the day when john like john would never want to plan really far in advance uh for things because you never know we're still together right and stuff so and that always bothered me. But we were on a vacation, and we were on vacation in? We were on a vacation in Key West, and it was, vacations were something new to me, because that wasn't really technology that my family had. So, like, planning long in advance for a vacation to far away Florida was pretty exotic for me. Do you okay? think it's, is it changed nowadays? Do you plan further in advance? A little bit. So anyway, bit. so we planned a vacation. We were, in, we were in Key West, and we were walking around the gay area, and we're chatting and talking and stuff. And, uh, you know, I said, uh, I, I talked about, you know, how the, the church was pretty neat, and there was some gyms that John liked. And at one point, John said something like, you know, when we retire, you could volunteer at the church, and I could help out at the gym. And he's chatting, and he looks, and I'm not beside him anymore. I'm about 10 feet back, stunned, standing in a spot. And he said, what's the matter? And I said, did you just talk about when we retire? Did you just talk about the possibility that we might be together again in the future? Like, are, And, and I, he said, oh, shut up, come on, right? And so then I got the point that maybe the That's enough. T- I think the time's running out on the video. Yeah, the time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So mm-hmm. anyway, and, and it was really interesting. I mean, part of the reason... For, I think John's reluctance was how different we were because you could pick any topic and we were totally opposite in that topic and so uh, that, that bothered him in terms of whether this was a compatible relationship or not and then I found a piece of legitimate research that talked about gay and lesbian couples and it said that couples who are more similar to each other tend on average not all the time but tend on average not to have long-term relationships but couples who are very different from each other tend to last longer. And part of that was about bringing difference into the relationship so it doesn't become boring. And heterosexual couples, to some degree, have that built in based on gender, uh, but we don't. And so, uh, and, and I think John realized how different we were may be an asset. And it has certainly been that way down through the years. But we're going to get into that topic in our next relationship video. So, Hope you enjoyed today, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Yep, and the bell beside the, there, the, the bell over there. The bell beside okay. the subscribe button. 
uh, so that you can get a notice when we post a video. Oh, and if you've watched us this far, you can hit the like button because you must have liked it enough to have watched us this far, right? Okay. Share, share it with others. See you again. Bye-bye. Ciao.